Today's topic is Wittestone Bridge and this Wittestone Bridge, this network was designed by Charles Wittestone. Therefore, the name of this electrical network has become Charles uh, Wittestone Bridge. So, today we study this Wittestone Bridge according to the new syllabus for 2020 and 2021 because the, of the uh, COVID-19 the syllabus has been reduced and we only study the quanti qualitative part qualitative means no derivation only the concepts only the results okay so in Wittestone bridge there are four resistance R1, R3, R2, R4 okay and instead of R1, R2, R3, R4, we can also name this as P, Q, R, S. Okay, X, Y, Z, M, N, O, P. Whatever we use, we want to, if you want to write in any form, we can always name it. So, for convenience, let us write R1, R2, R3, and R4. So, this Wittestone bridge is a network of four resistance connected in series and parallel for an example if I hold it this point and stretch it then I will see that this R1 and this R3 will align in a single wire like this okay it was just like this and I hold it here and I stretch then this and this will become in a same line so these two resistance are in series and this similarly, these two resistance, if I hold it, stretch it, will become in series. So it is combination of four resistance series in series and parallel. For example, if I see this one, these two are here and these two are here like this, isn't it? So these two are in parallel also. This and these are in series. This and these are in series. And this and this, both the branches are in parallel because it has been diverted from like this making this as parallel so all these four resistance are connected in quadrilateral form okay isn't it a quadrilateral yes it is a quadrilateral so Wittestone brace is a network of four resistance connected in series and parallel in the form of quadrilateral which is given in this figure in which a and C is connected with an external source of battery V and B and D is connected with a galvanometer G and this connection between B and D through the galvanometer is called its bridge because through this galvanometer the current will flow and the flow of current whether there is flow of current whether there is not flowing current is detected by galvanometer because galvanometer is a device to measure sorry to detect the current so here I have got the galvanometer now out of these four resistance one resistance is unknown okay the purpose is to find the value of unknown resistance then one of the resistance is my unknown for an example let us say this is my unknown okay unknown so r1 is my unknown resistance for an example and r3 r4 and r2 are my known resistance so but but this r3 and r4 and r2 may be a variable resistance maybe a standard resistance maybe a resistance box but these are known resistance so now let us distribute the current we know that the current flows from negative to positive so here let us consider the current i is coming in this direction in this direction and here will be my current i okay now according to the kirchhoff's first law from this point there will be a distribution of current using the junction law so let us consider the current one goes here and another current goes in this direction okay i don't know why i am not able to mark this yes so this say is my i1 current let us consider this is my i2 current now this i1 current will flow here and reach here this is my i1 
and whenever I press this point, then there is the two branches. One is this, and other is this. Now this I1 will get divided like this, isn't it? It is like this. So I1 is coming and it is like this. Okay. So I1 is coming from I1. There are two branches. So let us consider here one current is going. Let this current be I1. I will not write here now. And this current is coming down with the value I1. And here how much current is this? This current is my I2 from this coming I2 coming I1. So at this point this current is coming down, this current is coming down, this current is going there. Then all the currents will go through this. So how much current will be this? This is coming down, this is coming here. So from here this will be I2 plus I B current and these are very important points, okay? These two currents will be added and go here, okay? Now here how much current will remain here? First it was coming I1 coming and how much is lost? I G is lost so I have to subtract I G. So this is the current in this branch, right? So how much current will go there? Okay, we add here and we subtract here, okay? We add IG to I1, I2 because it was coming here and we subtract IG from I1 because from I1 IG was going down. So total current will be how much? It will be I1 minus IG plus I2 plus IG is the total current here, right? Because from this point I1 and IG is coming here, from this I2 and IG is going and they will add up. So this plus this. So now if you see here, minus IG and plus IG will cancel and I get I1 plus I2 which is equal to I current. Because from this I, I1 and I2 has distributed and if I add I1 and I2, I should get I. So again here, how much current will come? I current will come. So this is my uh, stone bridge. Okay. Now let us consider a condition. Let us consider a condition which is very important. Now we are not going to the derivation part. Condition when when potential at B is equal to potential at D. It means that the potential at this point B is equal to the potential at point D. Then what will happen? Let us see an example. So let us consider a uh, container like this and here I have got water. This is container B and this is my container D and I connect it with a pipe. Now what will happen? The water will flow in this direction like this. Why? Because this D is at less potential, low potential and this is at high potential. Similarly, B is at high potential and D is at low potential. Therefore, IG was flowing downward. Now, I make a condition that the potential at B and the potential at D are equal. It means that I will lift it here. Okay, it means that I will lift it here like this. I will make this pot here like this. Now tell me what will happen? Now then what will happen? There will be no flow. This is now B. Why no flow? Because the potential of this tank and potential of this tank has become equal. Therefore there is no flow of water. Similarly whenever the potential at B and potential at D is equal then what will happen? There will be no flow of current. So no flow of current through, through galvanometer G A L V A N O N A T E R okay this is corrected so note there is no flow of current through galvanometer that is I Z is become zero and this condition 
we have considered is called balanced condition. Balanced bridge. Okay, or null point condition. Or null point condition. Okay, so we are not going to study why and how current through IG will become zero. Okay, that is experimental part. We actually study in meter bridge, but according to the new syllabus, we are not supposed to study this. But I suggest you to uh, go through the quantitative also, that is derivation part also, because you must be preparing for your entrance examination, NEET, IIT, JEs, Northeastern Regional Institute of Science and Technology, and etc. etc. So for that you have to study this and I am going to put the video on this also, don't worry. So we are at balance condition or balance bridge. Now whenever the bridge is balanced, then we can say, this is very important now, then R1, okay, at balanced condition, then when the, when the bridge is balanced, we can say R1 divided by R2 is equal to R3 divided by R4 or this R1 divided by R3 is equal to R2 divided by R4 both are same both are same okay this divided by this is equal to this divided by this or this divided by this is equal to this divided by this so this is the Wheatstone bridge condition and which are going to use in middle bridge also so we have said that R2, R4 and R3 are known resistance. Say 2, M, 2, 2 ohm, say 6 ohm, say 10 ohm. Then if this is unknown, then we can find this, this known, this known, then we can always find the value of R1. I will take it here. If I want to take, then this will become into R3. And value of R3, R2 and R4 is known, then we can find the value of R1. So this is how easy we can find the value of unknown resistance. But in today's modern day, there are so many devices which can be easily used to find the unknown resistance. So this is all about the uh, Wittestone Bridge qualitative ideas according to the new syllabus. Thank you.